um, Venn diagram. Let's take down. Venn diagram is a diagrammatic way. Venn diagram is a diagrammatic way of solving problems involving sets. Venn diagram is a diagrammatic way of solving problems involving sets. Full stop. It was discovered by the British logician. It was discovered by the British logician called John Vane. The British logician called John Vane. First stop, take a paragraph. There are Venn diagram. There are Venn diagrams for two sets and three set problems. There are Venn diagrams for two set and three set problems. For two set and three set problems. Let's start with this. Venn diagram, let's start with Involving two sets. Alright, so you have Venn diagram for two problems. You have the two set problem Venn diagram and the three set problem Venn diagram. So how does it work? Let's start with two set um, Venn diagram problem. Let's take down the modal diagram. All right, down. The modal Venn diagram for two sets is given below. The modal Venn diagram for two sets. Is given below. The modal Venn diagram for two sides is given below. Below. I don't call this U. I call this um, M. Call this S. All these sets. So Venn diagram involving two sets, right? So let's say we have two sets, M and N. Two sets, M and N. How you draw the Venn diagram? Let's get look at it. Let's get all the parts right. Let's get all the parts right. Um, so if I look at this now, I have this space outside all of this. I have this space here. Yeah? I have this space here and then this space here. So for a Venn diagram involving two sets, there are four spaces. The first space, this point here. The second space, this one here. The third space, this one here. And the fourth. Let's label them. I want to call this A, call this B, call this C, and call this D. Alright? When it comes to solving problem on Venn diagram, they will say you should also use set notation. So I'm working with both a diagram and a notation. If I have two of it, if I have A here, yeah, what do you observe? This A space only contains element M. That means in set notation here, yeah, this space here, yeah, A is equal to total number of M. That's all. If I look at this space here, yeah, this space here yeah, only contains C. So I can see that C is equal to Total number of this one here, that's M. If I look at this point here, B, this space, look up, this space contains both M and N. So it's not, it's not like saying the M circle and the N circle both coincide here. So in segregation, B is given as the intersection of M and N. It becomes total number of M. Intersection M is both. This space here is M intersection M. Why? Because M and M both meet here. This space here, look at me. This space here, D. If you observe this space here, if I combine M and N, combine everything here, if I combine everything here, that's this M circle. Combine with M circle, I have this. So I'm having this point here. 
So this space here is what you get when I combine M and N together and subtract it from U. And that's what we're there, a complement. So D, the space outside, is equal to the total number of M. Since I'm combining M and N, it becomes a union. M union N, of course, uh, intersection. So please look it. Here is, here is, here is total number of A, or total number of M. Here is N intersection N. Here becomes total number of N. Here becomes N union N track. So note this four space and how they work um, in set. Example one. Example one. In a recent survey, example one, in a recent survey of 4,000 students, in a recent survey of 4,000 students, in a school, in a recent survey of 4,000 students in a school, comma, 1,000 students were listed as smokers and 1,500 as chewers of God. 1,000 students were listed as smokers and 1,500 as chewers of God. Full stop. 750 Full stop and continue. 750 were listed as both smokers and gun chewers. 750 were listed as both smokers and gun chewers. Full stop. Find out how many students. Find out how many students. Where neither smokers nor gum chewers. Find out how many students where neither smokers nor gum chewers. Alright, check the question again. I said in a recent survey of 4,000 students in a school, 1,000 students were listed as smokers. 1,500 as chewers of God. 750 were listed as both smokers and gum chewers. Find out how many students were neither smokers nor gum chewers. So look at me. I will teach you a method of solving this. Listen. Right? I will teach you a method of solving this. Listen. So case one. Of course, um, if I'm doing a problem on sex, Involving Venn diagram. They won't tell you it's a Venn diagram for two problems or it's a Venn diagram for three problems. You'll not be told. So how do you know it's a two problem um, Venn diagram or three problem Venn diagram? Simple. Read your question. Now case one there. First of all, let's try to list out given parameters. So that's always your first case in science solving. Right, math, piece of chemistry. Your first task. List out given parameters. Now the first thing there is this. In a survey of how many students there? 4,000. 4, so what does it mean there? My total number of students is what there? 4,000. What does it mean there? It means the total number of students in universal sense is equal to what there? 4,000. That's the first case. Right? Total number of students there is 4,000. I'm done with that. Next one is said 1,000 were listed as what? Smokers. Next up, 1,500 as what? Chewers of God. So, aside universal set, I have two things there. Abby, that's what there. Smokers and what there? Chewers. Chewers. So, because what there is separate for what? Two, two um, uh, problems. Or a set Venn uh, diagram for two problems. Your first task is to define each of them. Take down. Let the number of Okay, hold on. Take down. Let the students who smoke be S. 
like the students who smoke, like the students who smoke BX. Next up, find the total number of smokers. So, N of smokers. Please check how many there? 1,000. 1,000. Alright. I've defined that. Now, aside smokers, we have to begin there. Gum chewers or chewers of gum. Number 3, please. Let the number of students, let the students who chew gum, who chew gum, be what? Which do you use? C? Okay. Be C. Please, how many there? 1,500. So that means put our number of C is equal to 1,500. Okay? 4,000 students, uh, smokers, are uh, 1,000, chewers of gum, 1,500. Next to be says 750 were listed as what there? Good smokers and what? Chewers of gum. That means we have four there. That means they are intersection. So the number of students who smoke at the same time chew gum is equal to what there? 750. That's the case. Now, so first of all, list out all the parameters map. Right? 4,000 students, 1,000 smokers, 1,500 shots of gum, and then I have 750 for both smokers and gum chewers. So look at this. In every in every Venn diagram problem, whether it's a two-set Venn diagram or three-set Venn diagram, what you start with is what is called a model diagram. Draw a model diagram. Now, mind you, the model diagram is not what you in solving. Now, what's a model diagram? Look at it. So I'll come here. Now, number one, you know that it's a Venn diagram involving two sets. That's this. I'm giving you a model diagram as this. So I'm having this part here and this part here. Alright, you said there are two types of persons there. Smokers X, that's this part here. Gum chewers C, that's this part here. Next up, in future value here, we said for smokers you have 1000. So under the smokers um, circle, this part, I'm putting in 1000. We said for gum chewers, they are 1,500. So under gum chewers, this part here, yeah, I'll put 1,500. Now we said you have 750 persons who both smoke and chew gum, they are intercession. So that becomes this part here, yeah? 750 persons here, yeah? both smoke and chew gum, this part. The question now is find the number of students who neither smoke nor chew gum. That becomes outside your circle. Of course, that's my circle now. Out of the circle, I'll have this one here, alright? So I'll have it here. Let's define x. But five without v. Let the number of students who need us more. Alright. Be x, please. If you're, you can't this please. If you're imputing anything there, you have to clearly define them. So you don't come here and say X here. Of course, X is going to be still. If you have to add anything there, define them. So by 2 point, to define all of this. After your model diagram, what next? After model diagram, what next? Alright, so look at this. After model diagram, which is this, what next? You now draw the real diagram. Now, what the real diagram? What does it look like? Look at it. So this is my model diagram for my question. Now, what does my real diagram look like? The same thing. I'm drawing the same thing. Um, this. Um, smoke out. She was a girl. And then look at this. Look up. So what's the between the model diagram and the real diagram? So look at this. The major difference between model diagram 
and read diagram is this. For your model diagram, ah, not this, please. For the read diagram, some part will change. The only part that does not change in a set problem is the inner part. That's 750 here. I'll pick up 750 and I'll bring it here. This is the only part that does not change in a Venn diagram problem, the inner part. For this part here, for my read diagram, it will change. How do you get this part in the read diagram? It's as easy as this minus this, that's all. I'm having 1000, I'm having 750. So for my read diagram here, it becomes what you have there, 1000 minus 750. Please give me value, what do you have here? So this becomes my read diagram value. This part is the same thing. I'm having 1,500, of course, minus this. So it becomes 1,500 minus 750. This is what there? 750. Please don't forget. The only part that does not change is what there? The inner part. The other one change. Alright, so what next there? I have X to so bring up X here. Alright, so you have this. So you do this one here. Yeah? Your lecturers don't need this. They don't need this. So this one there at the extreme, this is what you draw for your answer sheet. What next now? I can go straight and start solving. But don't do that with them. Now here's your next task. Your next task is to represent all of this in um, set notation. Right? Now we know that the universal set is a combination of everything. That means this, this universal set here. Is a condition of everything here. So the next one you have to do this. Recall that, recall this, recall that my universal set, this of Q, is equal to combine everything here. First of all, I have this space here. What's this space here? 250. In set notation, what's this space here? N of S. Have it? So it becomes what there? N of S. This space. This space, we call it what there? S intersection C. So next up, plus total number of S intersection C. This part, this part here becomes what there? N of what? C. I mean, that's N of what there? Plus, what's this part here? How do you call this? Total number of what there? No. In set of what do you call it? S. No. You are C1 there. Right. You're here earlier and you find this. You find this earlier from here. So here becomes this part is equal to X union C prime. So it's called. Alright. So in bit value please. N of Q is how many there? That's 4,000 minus N of X. How many here? 250 from my read diagram plus here how many there? 750 plus this point 750 plus this point x so I have it alright what we have now I'm having 4,000 is equal to this plus this how many there? 1,000 plus this 1750 plus what there? X. Move this one over here. I have 4000 plus comes here minus 1750 is equal to what there? X. Please give me this value. What do you have? 3000. 2250 equal to what there? X. At this point now, add the same vent. Therefore, the number of students who neither smoke nor chew gum is what? 2,250 students. Take that, sorry. 2,000. 250 to the that's all Take down please. Take down. 
the modal brain diagram for three sites the modal brain diagram for three sites the modal brain diagram for three sites say M say M capital M capital N and P the modal diagram for three sets C, M, N and P is given below is given below is given below so look at it Spaces. Listen, what we did Venn diagram for two problems, we define all the spaces. For this one here too, let's define all the spaces. So I'll use perhaps small letters for each of the space. I'm having this point here, call it A, this point here, call it B, call here C, call here D, E, F, G, and H. Define all of these spaces in set location. This point here, A, is equal to total number of elements in M. That is here is just M. So it's N of M. Total number of elements in M. In M. Next up, this space here contains two circles. That's M and M. I'm saying M and M meets at this point. So it's called what there? An intersection. So B is equal to what? Total number of what? M intersection. M. That's this point. This point here is only for my N circle, as you can see here. So C is equal to what there? N of N. Total number of elements in set N. Here is D. This, this point here is for this circle and this circle. This circle going this way, and this one here meets at D. So this one contains N and D to become their intersection. So this point, D, is read total number of n intersection v n intersection v. next up this point here e e here is equal to at this point here e you can see that my m circle my n circle and t circle all meet here so it's e equal to what there e is equal to sorry the intersection of all three circles that becomes M intersection M intersection P. So I have that is point here. Next of F. F is equal to for F. I have these two. That's my N circle and T circle meeting here. So F becomes total number of N intersection P. So N intersection P. Next up, G. G here is equal to, this space is only for P. You can see, my P circle only becomes total number of P only. Finally, this point H. Now, how do you get H? If I combine all of M, yeah, and add N, yeah, and add P here, it now gives me this point or this space. So this space here, H, is equal to total number of, in this point now, or for this one here, I'm combining them. It becomes a union. So it becomes M, of course, I'm combining both M, N, and P. So it becomes total number of M, union, N, union, P, all prime. So I have this. So please note each of the points. Here is M. Here is N intersection N. Here is N. 
Here is M intersection P. Here is N of N intersection N intersection P. Because all of the, all of the circles meet here. F, this point here, is the meeting point between N and P. Becomes N intersection P. Here is for P circle alone. Becomes N of P. Of course, here it comes N of this, union this, union this, all graph. Right? Let's take an example, please. Think of it. Example. In 2022, in 2022 jam examination, in 2022 jam examination, held at the River State University. In 2022 jam examination, held at the River State University. Comma. It was discovered that it was discovered that 860 candidates it was discovered that 860 candidates took mathematics. 860 candidates took mathematics. Comma. 800 took physics. 800 took physics. And 640 took chemistry. And 240, and what? 640, please, to chemistry. Of these numbers, of these numbers, of these numbers, 200 took both maths and physics. 200 took both maths and physics. Comma. 300 took mathematics and chemistry. 300 took mathematics and chemistry. Comma. 220. 220 took physics and chemistry. 220 took physics and chemistry. Why 100 candidates took all three papers? Why 100 candidates took all three papers? A. A. Translate your answers. Sorry. Translate your answer fine, on a Venn diagram. A. Translate your answer on a Venn diagram. B. How many candidates were in that center? How many candidates were in that center? That's B. C. How many candidates took mathematics and physics only? Are we there? That's it, right? Yes. D. How many candidates took at least two subjects? D. How many candidates took at least two subjects? E. How many candidates took at most two subjects? E. How many candidates took at most two subjects. If you look at that question there, I find something very weird. Right? There's something very good about that question. Very, very weird. Now, if you look at the question, please check. Um, there's a part that says, look at this. After that, after that of these numbers, what complex what there? 200, 200 there. Mathematics and what? Physics. Now, if they told you that 200 took mathematics and physics, how come they still ask you to find how many students took mathematics and physics only? 
They give that number in the question. How come they have to find the day? Huh? No, no, it's not. It's not a function of. It's not a function of expressing the Venn diagram. The idea is this. Want to talk? Want to talk? It's not a function of Venn diagram. The idea is this. The equation given to you, give you one there, is a model Venn diagram. And of course, if you look at the example I earlier, from the model Venn diagram, you not get one there, the real diagram. That's the concept. So that number there is not the actual number. That's the concept there. All right. Solution means. Solution, my first task as always is to list out given parameters. Now, usually, what we can do is just write right there m equal to this. Physics is p equal to this. We know that mass is f. We know that physics is p. We know that chemistry is c. But first of all, do what there? Define them. Very important. Define them. Speak that, please. Let the number of students who took mathematics be f. Let the number of students who took mathematics be n. Next up, how many n do we have? Total number of mathematics students is equal to how many? 860. I have defined terms. I have defined terms. Number two, so make sure you define your terms. Let the number of students who took maths be n. Because n of n equal to 860. Number two, let the number of students who took physics be what? P. Let the number of students who took physics be P. So how many physics can be given there? 800. So n of P is equal to 800. n of P is equal to 800. Okay? Next up in number three, let the number of students who took chemistry be six four be what C, sorry. Let the number of students who took chemistry be C. Of course, N of C becomes 640. N of C becomes 640. At this point, you define what M means, what P means, what C means. If you want to continue, if you have time. You can say the number of students who take physics and uh, maths and physics is M, but don't stress. You just use set notation and get value. Next up says of these numbers, 200, super there, maths and physics. That becomes what? If I have 200 taking maths and physics, is it an intersection or union? Intersection. intersection. That means total number of maths and physics. Equal to how many there? Become 200. Number five, it says 300 to mathematics and chemistry. Total number of mathematics and chemistry equal to 300. That's not all. They said, again, number six, they said 222 physics and chemistry. Total number of physics and chemistry is equal to 220. I have this. And then, why 100 candidates took all three papers? So, all papers combined is equal to 100. So, total number of, total number of uh, mathematics combined with physics intersection chemistry. Okay? Mathematics intersection physics. Intersection uh, chemistry equal to 100 candidates. So this is your first task. List out all the parameters. Next task, draw model diagram. From model diagram, draw what there? Real diagram. So let's get model diagram. Of course, for this problem here, it's a set problem, Venn diagram for three set problems. Call this U. I'm having this. Alright, so I'm having the first one, this. I'm having the second one, this. I'm having the third one. Please leave them as you like. Alright? I'm calling this maths. I'm calling this physics. I'm calling this chemistry. You can choose to see physics, 
chemistry, math, the mm -hmm. same thing. So they pass back. All right. So we said for math, for mathematics, 860. So other mathematics here, I'll have 860. We said for physics, 800. So other physics here, 800. We said for chemistry, 640. Other chemistry here, 640. Okay. Next up, mass intersection physics is 220. And for this diagram here, mass and physics, two family there, 200. 200. 200. Having 200. That's this point. Next up, we said mass intersection chemistry. So mass and chemistry, they won't meet here only. That's how many there? 300. That's 300. Next up, I have physics intersection chemistry. Physics and chemistry, they meet here. How many there? 220. And then finally, all three combined meet at this point. You said it's how many there? 100. So look at this. Let me now give something else. If they had said, if they had said, if they had said 70 students or perhaps 70 candidates took neither mass nor physics nor chemistry, how do you put that one there? Of course. 70 took neither mass nor physics nor chemistry. You put one there outside here. Let's add this. We added that. But since they didn't add, we leave it out. Alright. Yes, my brother diagram now. Let's now get the read diagram. Let's now get the read diagram. So I'm having uh, this. Does not change what there the middle part. Same concept goes with three um, set problems. For being that that involving three set, the only part that does not change is what here this part. All right. So take out the middle part. Repeat it here. I have one on red. So how do you get this part in the read in the read diagram? So the model diagram. How do you get this part in the read diagram? Do a subtraction. So here becomes what there. This minus this. 200 minus 100. How many there? I'm having 100. Please think of it. This part two, same concept. This minus this. 300 minus 400. That gives you 200. Here becomes 200. Having this. Same case here. This part here becomes 220 minus here. That gives you 120. Please don't advise. When you're writing your notes, indicate how we got those values. Don't just write 120. Salah break, you will not study. For Salah, you now come back and then now check your notes. You're seeing 120 here. You now look for your question here, no 120. Start asking, did they make me in class? So while you're copying this one, please indicate something here. Put an indicator. Put that 120 in simply 220 minus 100. Show it in your notes. It becomes a reminder. Alright, put it up. Alright, so I'm done with this. Here's where the task is. How do you get this part here? Look at this. How do you get this part here? Now we've got this concept for each of these parts. Simply do a subtraction. That's all. How do you get this part? Look up it. How do you get this part? Look up it. So it becomes this. It becomes this. What do you have here? So look up. It becomes for n. It becomes 860 minus everything you have here. All right. 860 from here minus. I will come to this diagram here. See my n circle. In my M circle, it encases three numbers. What I want, I want there? 
100, 100, 200, like this. So it becomes 86 in there minus the sum of all the numbers in the M bracket. 100 plus 100 plus 200. Sorry, sorry. Don't forget, please. Right, by your Okay, what is happening? This is what, yeah? 860 minus how many there? 400. How many there? So this part becomes 460. So please be observant. And mind you, why do you subtract? Yeah, you use what there? In bracket. So minus in bracket, sum all of this. Right? Here's the popular mistake. Now, you, you, you see, you see, you see, you see 860 minus uh, this now becomes 100 plus 100 plus 200. This will not give you this answer. So when you're adding minus, be careful to use a bracket here. Very important. If not, you have the answer. Mathematics. Let's get physics. So the same concept there. In physics bracket, I have 800. So it becomes 800 minus in bracket. In bracket. Look at this circle. Yes, by this circle here. Yeah? It contains three numbers 100, 100, 120. So minus 100 plus 100 plus 120. This gives you 800 minus. What do you have here? 320. Please give me value. What do you get there? 480. This is for physics. 480. I'll come here. I'll put 480. One last one, please. Chemistry, this point, of course, same concept. For chemistry, what I have here is 640. So because 640 minus, look at the C bracket. Take out all the numbers there. So this one here becomes this plus this plus this. 200 plus 100 plus 120. This now gives you 640 minus 300 plus 100, 4 plus 120, 420. What is that? What do you get there? 220. Alright, so this becomes 220. 220. So this now becomes my read diagram. So I'll tell you why I got it. It becomes my read diagram. Alright, so here's the read diagram in now solving problems. The A part says translate your result in a read diagram. I am proving that. That's my A part. Translate your result in a Venn diagram. I'm true it is. That's your um, that's your A part. Let's get the total number of what candidates. That's all. How many candidates were in the center? That means what there? Yeah? Total number of what candidates. Now look up. Look up. How do you get that because what there? Yeah? Your universal set. Now listen. You don't just go and start writing everything. Your first task will be do what there? Write the what? Set notation. So in set notation there, I'll have n of u. I'll put about see n of u is equal to represent all of this in set uh, notation. Become this part is n of m plus this part is n and p n and p combined. So n of n intersection p. Plus here is P, N of P plus here I'm thinking one two three. This one here N P and C meet here. So N of N intersection P intersection C plus I'm thinking one two three four. Next of this part N and C becomes N of N intersection C. Plus this part is P and C come uh, meet, so P and C meet here and it comes N of P intersection C. Now finally here yeah, that C alone N of C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright. So in P values now, that means N of U is equal to for N. Here is 460. Plus n intersection p here, yeah? that's 100 plus n of p, this point here, yeah? that's 480 plus 
uh, n intersection n intersection c. That's 100 plus um, n intersection c. m and c meet here. That becomes 200 plus p intersection c. So meet here, 120 plus only c. That's 220. Please punch out value. N of U is equal to what you guys? Zero. This is four. This ten is eight. Eight carry one. Two, three, uh, four, five, six. This is this is what other ones? One six eighty. All right. So I'm having this. We are asking. That's what they have. How many what? So from here you now see, therefore, the number of students, therefore, number of students in the center is how many there? 1680. Is it necessary to start writing sequence again? No. Would I write it? Yes. Alright, what's what's that? What's it there? Uh, let's get CP. What's it? Alright, so looking at maths and physics, look at that diagram here. See the points here. This point here is for my mass circle and physics, this point. So I have that. N of mass intersection physics equal to how many there? 100. That's it. What's next there? So this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets tricky. At least two. This is where it gets tricky. At least two. Um, for you to understand, look at it. For you to understand, look at. For you to understand the concept of at least two and at most two. Let me redraw a diagram and show you some concepts. Look at this. Look at this. Let me use the same thing here. M, P, and C. Listen, please. At least two, at most two. What's the difference? Listen. Now, here's what you note. For a look at it. For a Venn diagram containing three sides, um, the maximum space. Listen, please. The maximum space there contains three elements. There are three sides. So we want to. So in this diagram here, there are spaces that contain just one set. In this diagram here. There are spaces that contain two sets. In this diagram here, there are spaces that contain what there? Three sets. For instance, if I take here, please. here is one element there, right. just one here. If I take here, here contains how many elements there? Two. two. That's what there? M and P. Here contains just one. So what there? P. We have never get one. For one, this point contains just M. That's one. Here contains just one, that's P. Here contains one, that's chemistry, C. This point here contains two, that's mass and chemistry. This point here contains two, physics and chemistry. This point here contains two, mass and physics. And this point contains there? Three. Mass, chemistry, and physics. That's the concept. Now, if you see, look at it, look at it. If I have three numbers, one, two, three. Take numbers here such that you have at least two. If they say at least two, it means two and above. Two of us. Yes. At least two means two should be what there? The least value, the smallest value. So if I'm choosing at least two, it means choose those two that have minimum two. If it's minimum two, you got what there? Two, three, and above. So I'm picking those space that has two and three. At least two. The smaller should be two. That's the concept. I'll now put this diagram here. 
which part has at least two? One, two, three, and four. I will pick one. Because the least there was two. So I'll pick those things that have two and three. That's the concept. So for at least two, that means I'm picking just here, 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 and here. Put them in segregation. Here is the intersection of M and P. It becomes equal to total number of N intersection P. I'll take in this. I'll take this part again. At least two. So it becomes here. Becomes plus that one is intersection of M and C. It becomes M intersection C. Plus, I'll pick up this one again. This is two again. That's P and C. It becomes P intersection C. Finally, they say at least two. If two is the same thing, two and three, if there's a four, I'll choose four. Of course, there's no four there. Just two and three. This point is for the three of them. It becomes n of what f? n intersection p intersection c. So in good value, for this, what is the value there? 100. 100 plus this one here. Yeah? 200 plus this one here. Yeah? 120 plus that one there. Yeah? 100. Combine it. 300, 420, 520, having 520 hundreds. That's how it works. Alright, E says at most 2. At most 2. Listen, no. listen, listen. Listen, please. At least 2 means my least should be 2. My, my smallest value should be 2. So I'm taking 2 and above. If I say at most 2, what does it mean? To be what there? To be what there? 2 and what? Below. 2 and below. So I'm taking those spaces that have what there? 2 and below to be what there? 1. Because those spaces that have 2 and 1. That becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You don't cost that 3. Alright, here's what then, n of m to becomes n of m plus this point here, m and p combined, so n of n intersection p plus here is n of p, so n of p plus here is p and c combined, so n of M and C. M intersection C plus here is P and C combined. N of P intersection C plus here is just C. That becomes N of C. Three in Q values. N of M 460 460 plus N intersection P 100 plus n of p 480 plus this one here how many there 200 plus this one this one next yeah 120 plus for c how many there 220 all right here yeah. money 560 here yeah. um, for this line 1060 one, 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 1040 this everything 150 yeah. yeah. this so and this this so becomes 1000 580 candidates. 1580 candidates. Is that all? Yes. Alright, so that's about it. Um, let's do one more example. Let's do one more example. Now, here's the punch. Here's the punch line. Here's the punch line. See, look up. Your key to getting, listen up, make an observation. Your key to getting your read diagram 
is if you have the value of either part, two of us. So what if the inner part is missing? Because for me to get this value here, I will do this from my from my read diagram, from my model diagram, maybe you do this minus this part on this part. So what if I'm not giving this? What do you do? And so this x, what next? <laughs> Example three. To investigate the popularity. To investigate the popularity of a new detergent. To investigate the popularity of a new detergent. Detergent. A new detergent. A comma B and C. To investigate the popularity of a new detergent. Capital A, comma, capital B and capital C. Full stop. 100 housewives. 100 housewives. 100 housewives were asked to complete. 100 housewives were asked to complete a questionnaire. 100 housewives were asked to complete a questionnaire. Questionnaire the board. And the following information were obtained. And the following information were obtained. Were obtained. For the two housewives used brand A. For the two housewives used brand A. Capital A. Comma. 50 brand B. 48 brand C. Comma 12 brand A and B. 12 brand A and B. Comma 18 brand B and C. 18 brand B and C comma 13 brand A and C 13 brand A and C full stop after 13 brand A and C full stop now continue how many housewives had used A. How many housewives had used A all three brands? How many housewives had used A all three brands? B. Two brands only. A. All three brands. B. Two brands only. C. Three brands only. Three brands only. Alright. So, our time is fast spent. Let me believe you know what to do. Alright. Miss them out on your, on your own, right? Then that's what you know to do. So, I'll just go to the point. Alright? Now, they said, for two housewives had used brand A. That means my first thing there, number of housewives that use brand A is equal to 42. Next up, they said 50 brand B. Number of housewives that use brand B is equal to 50. Next, they said 48 brand C. Number of housewives that use brand C is 48. Next up, we have A and B, that's A intersection B. How many there? 12. 
Okay. Next up, we had B and C as 18. B and C as 18. Uh -huh. Next up, we had A and C. How many there? 13. All right. It says, how many housewives are you all in brand? So, let's look at this one. Your first task, of course, obviously, is a set problem on three sets. So get out the diagram. Get out the diagram. I have this. You have one, you have two, you have three. So A, B, and C. All right, so let's, let's look at Let's look at this place. You say, find the person that does that, that do what? What question there? Number of wives. So, so look at this. Look at this. So, look at this. Input these values into the diagram. For A, the set is 42. So, I'm having 42 here. Yeah? Here's my model diagram. For B, is 50. So, I'm having 50 here. Yeah? For C, is 48. So, I'm having 48 here. Yeah? For a intersection B, A and B, this point here, is 12. That's 12. For B intersection C, B and C is 18. For A and C, yeah, is 13. Find out how many two of graphs, yes or no. What's the first step? Define it. So I'll say, let the number, let the number of housewives Housewives that took that took all three brands, all three brands, the X, the X. So I'll come here. I can now put in X. Why? I've defined it. So after defining what X means, you can now put in X. At this point now, now let's know. If they have said 15 housewives, you need that A, nor B, nor C. When you add that, this one here. If they have said 15 housewives, you need that A, nor B, nor C. Means, if they say 15 housewives, you don't use any of A, B, C. It should be outside. But since I'm not giving that value, I'll ignore it. Alright, so let's get our read diagram. Um, same case. Same case. Um, this. Bracket. Look at the A circle. What do you find there? 
from minus x next of x next of b so into what there yeah? swap minus x this one plus x plus benzene minus x that's it this one here yeah? minus a second so minus in bracket swap minus x plus x plus benzene minus x simplify this this gives you what 42 minus take the number as x 12 plus 13 25 minus x plus x minus x and um, 0 minus x plus x it cancels out it is 0 next up minus x now minus x what this up is now equal to use minus to expand it gives you what there 42 minus to this minus 25 minus minus plus x so it's equal to 42 minus 25 minus 17. minus 17 17 next up plus x so here becomes 17 plus x so that's the concept you see how to do this that's the concept let's look for b for b for b that's for it same concept I'm having 50 here so it becomes 50 minus look in your B bracket in B bracket I have this one here I can see this 12 minus X plus this one here X plus this one here 18 minus X that's in the B bracket it's all like this what condition gives you 50 minus 12 plus 18, 30, 30 minus x plus x, 0 is up, next up, minus x. What this up? It gives you 50 into this and this, minus 30, minus minus plus x. That gives you what? Eh? 20 plus x. Here becomes 20. Plus x. Next up for c. For c, what do I have there? Same concept. What do I have here? 48. Because 48 minus. Look at the c bracket. In c bracket, I have all of this. That becomes what there? 13 minus x plus x plus 18 minus x. That gives me 13 minus x plus x plus what there? 18 minus x. Work this out. This gives you 48 minus 13 plus 18. 31 minus x plus x. 0 is up. Next up, minus x. This is now equal to 48 minus 31 minus minus plus x. So it's equal to this and this one there. Plus one there. It gives you 17 plus x. So I have. I have so this is what I have. What the what's the impact? What does the if say? All three brands. So how many house are you all three one there? Brands. How many you all three brands? Look at this. All three brands is X. All three brands is X. So how do you get X? The concept is now this. Recall that. Please check. Check it. They said how many housewives? Please check. How many housewives? Huh? Huh? So I have 100 housewives. Alright. Back to business. So how many, how many housewives took all three? Brands. They said it's 100. So what's the concept? How do we get X? They said all three brands. Now they interviewed 100 housewives. They said all three brands. Find X. How do you find X? The concept is simple. Use U to sum up everything. Re record that the universal set is equal to the sum of everything here. That's this part here. N of A plus this part here. N of A intersection B. Plus this part here, n of b plus this part here, a and c, 
n of a intersection c because this part here that's n of a intersection b intersection c plus this part here n of b intersection c plus finally this part here n of c so if it values here that means this value here we said is 100 housewife is equal to n of a here is 17 plus x becomes 17 plus x plus a intersection B, yeah? 12 minus X, so plus 12 minus X. Now you're wondering, why do you use brackets here? Well, I'm doing addition, so it does not matter, does it? It doesn't matter, right? Since I'm doing addition, I must not put brackets, so it doesn't, it's not necessary. But observe, when I was doing subtraction, I included brackets, right? If you're doing addition, it doesn't matter. So you can proceed. Uh, next up, n of b, that be yes. n of b, how many left? So plus 20 plus x plus n of a intersection c, 13 minus x plus n of combine of that x plus n of b intersection c, 18 minus x. Finally, N of C, how many there? Eh? Alright, from here I have that 100 is equal to add all the numbers 17 plus uh, 12, 29 plus this, 49 plus this, 62 plus this, 80 plus this, 97. 97. X minus X is up. X minus X is up. X minus X is up. And let's put there X becomes plus X. I'll get X now. Move this over here. 100 minus 97. Let's put the word there. X. Put that in now. 3 is equal to X. So therefore, X equal to what there? 3. So how many wipes? 2 or 3? The answer is 3. How many three? Oh, how many has have used all three brands? That's a nice word there. Three. That's it. Okay. B says two brands only. Look at it. Look at this part, please. When you have two brands, where do you have it? Here, Abby. Yes. Here and here. This is where. Here is A and B. Here is A and C. Here is B and C. So these are your two brands only. So first of all, write it in set division. Here is A and B. So number of A intersection B plus here is A and C. Number of A intersection C plus here is B and C. That's B intersection C. This is equal to A intersection B is 12 minus X plus a intersection C is 13 minus X plus B intersection C is 18 minus X. Sum this up. 12 plus 13, 15. 25. 25 plus 18, 43. Minus X minus X minus 2X minus X minus 3X. Minus 3x. But we got x as we got what there? 3. In Q3 here it comes what there? 43 minus 3 times x. What's x there? 3. Got x there as 3. So it comes what there? 43 minus 9. How many there? 34. Alright. So it means 34 has what? 2 uh, two brands. What's C there? C says what? Is it three or one brand? Three brands only. Three brands only. Why is that? That's X, I mean. X, how many there? That's three. Right? Three brands only. That's X.
If they are said one brand only, what will it be? Yes. Yeah, and here yeah, is? Yes. Then put in the value. So are we good? Yes. Alright, so let's call the day. See you soon.